It had only been about six months since I broke up with my ex-boyfriend, 27M. He seemed like the right person for me, and I thought he had everything I could want. I considered moving in with him after I graduated from college. I wanted to marry him and be with him for the rest of my life. Even though we hadn't been together for a year yet, he made me feel so special from the first day we talked. I know it sounds silly to think about things like that right now. When I think about it now, this was definitely a love-bombing situation. I can tell he wanted me to feel close to him so I wouldn't want to leave. We met on Hinge in October and spent almost all of our time together until February, when he told me he didn't want me to stay at his house because he had problems with his roommates. By March, I could tell that our relationship had completely changed. He went from being genuinely interested in me and spending all of his time on me to being too anxious or too tired to spend any time with me. A lot of the time we still saw each other, but something was different now. We told each other where we were, but he always said, no location found. It was one day that I asked him about it by telling him to let me fix something on his phone, but he wouldn't let me, I had never been allowed to look at or use his phone for anything, so I never really thought about it until now. He made it seem like I could never use his phone for anything. I wasn't being clear when I asked to see it so I could do something, but he figured out I was talking about his position, even though I hadn't said it yet. He must have known his location didn't work the whole time because every time I asked him about it, he said, why doesn't it work? He said, I don't know, can you fix it? As soon as I told him that was what I was going to do, he changed the setting on the Find My Phone app and the problem went away. The rest of the day I felt sad and confused, but I mostly ignored it. My friend told me that he had this setting off on purpose, so I kept wondering if he really did. Even though the proof was right in front of me, I didn't believe her when she said he knew what he was doing. I thought this was still very strange because in December, he looked through my whole phone while I was asleep, trying to find proof that I was cheating on him while I was giving him all the love and care he was giving me. It wasn't fair at all, and I had no idea he was talking to other people at this point, so it was really embarrassing. He let me go to his house for the first time in over a month, on my birthday March. In his room, I found a women's deodorant that wasn't mine, which made me feel very anxious. When I asked him who it was and why it was in his room, he said he had no idea. I also let that go in the end, but it was still really confusing for me. I think I just told myself that one of his roommate's deodorants got into his room or that the dog brought it in. Because we talked so much about cheating and trust in our relationship, I couldn't picture him doing anything to hurt me. We cursed at each other and promised that we would never do that again. If we wanted to, we could just go our different ways. Because this made me trust them so much, I chose not to make a big deal out of it. I still couldn't go to his house in April, because he told me that his roommates were very mad at him for having friends over one night, and one of them got so drunk that they peed on their couch in the basement. I thought this was a pretty good reason to be worried, but since I was his girlfriend and they knew me, I thought I could get away with it. He wouldn't let me come over again until this past Friday, when he found out the truth. But in April and May, we hadn't seen each other very often. He would sometimes hang out and sleep over in my room, but that was it. He was still too tired and eager to do things with me. I wasn't hanging out with him and his friends, and we didn't go out. Because of how different our relationship was in the beginning, I started to feel really lonely and stressed. He stopped praising me too, and our last good sex was in February. He never showed up and couldn't stay up, so I thought something was wrong with me, and he wasn't interested in me anymore. He told me it was his nervousness, which made sense, but it still made me mad because none of my needs were being met. He didn't make me feel nearly as special as he did before. He still hung out with his friends. Even when he said he was tired, didn't want to go home, and was tired, he did. One night, he broke his promise to come sleep over in my room, but hung out with his friends instead. When I texted him when I was upset, he never replied. He said that his friends would give him rides home if they hung out with him after work, which he did since he hadn't had a car since February. In all this time, I thought he was just not feeling well because of the problems in his life. He paid for everything with Uber and didn't have a car for a few months. His roommates didn't like him, and they wanted me to come over. His pay was bad for weeks, he said. He made up reasons why things didn't feel right and why we couldn't see each other. 
but I still believed him because I remembered how sure and happy I was with our relationship at the start. Every time I was mad at him for how he had been treating me lately, he told me it would be that way again. I could say a lot more about how his behavior toward me at times made me feel very nervous and guilty about myself, but there's just too much to talk about, and it was mostly manipulative and indifferent to how I felt. After thinking about all of these things, I thought I should leave, but I couldn't because he showed me love every time I asked for. My family and friends didn't like him because I told them so much about the bad things he did and said to me. He said he would try to be better and show me that he loved me more, but he couldn't. I know it was because he had been cheating on me for about two months. He finally got together with me on Thursday after being away for more than a week. He paid $30 and for an Uber to take me to his house. At this point I needed time with him a lot, so I was thrilled to see him again. We went to get him a haircut, saw an old friend at one of his old jobs, and had dinner at a bar. He paid me almost no attention the whole time we were at the bar, as he had been doing every time we hung out for months. He never looked at me, told me nice things, or showed that he was interested. He only spoke up when it was about something he saw on the internet. They were the only things he did. He had his phone with him all the time, and we didn't talk about much. It had been a long time since we had seen each other, and I didn't understand why he didn't seem to care that I was there. He took a nap when we got back to his house. He woke up while we were still not talking much. To keep me busy, I turned on South Park. I told him that night that I felt overlooked and alone, and that I thought we weren't even friends anymore because he didn't want to talk or spend time with me. He didn't say much, but I didn't want to start a fight, so I didn't. After a while, we both fell asleep. It was Friday morning. Because I was worried about my bond with him, I didn't sleep well. As he slept, I got up and began looking for the note I had written for him that was sent with his favorite animal teddy bear that I had ordered about a week before to help him feel better about how he was feeling lately. I looked in his drawers because I couldn't find it. Nobody thought it was strange that I did that because I kept some of my things there too. Instead of the note, I found a face moisturizer for another girl and a cologne that comes in a shoe-shaped box. I knew right away. He was seeing someone else. This is the reason he didn't want me to visit. He stopped giving me all of his time, love, and attention because of this. That's why I stopped feeling unique. I woke him up and told him, you're seeing someone else. I told him about what I found even though he pretended not to understand. He could only say, why are you looking through my drawers at 8 a.m.? I became scared and angry at him more than any other time in the seven months we've known each other. I asked why, who, and when, but they didn't answer. Are you seeing someone else? Why did you do that? Please say something and tell me the truth. And then what? was his answer. When I found what Lula I had left to pack, I yelled at him and felt so hurt and misled. That was the last thing I would ever say to that jerk. I didn't deserve it, and I would never have done that to him. I told you you wouldn't cheat, and you said you would. How could you then do this to me? What did I do to earn this? He wouldn't answer me and didn't seem to care about anything. My friend came right away after I called her to pick me up from his house. He told me he would call an Uber and asked who I was. I told him no, and I didn't want to talk to him again. I was free to go, and he didn't text me anything. We hung out with a girl who knew him through her ex-boyfriend, who was friends with mine. She was shocked when I told her because she thought we had been apart for a month. She told me that her ex called her in early April while my man and her were hanging out and told her about his new girlfriend. I was horrified and felt totally lied to. He kept me in the dark for a long time by lying to me. He didn't want me in his life, so why did he keep me? I have no idea what to think about this. It really surprised me because I only saw the good in him and trusted him with my whole life, ignoring all the warning signs in our relationship. I stuck with him even though he kept making me feel crazy and like I was too much for him, and he did it all to cheat on me. This girl also told me about some guy from his old job that he set me up with and made me hang out with one night. She said he tried to date her before me, and that it was very strange that he would put us in the same place at the same time. When I hung out with this girl, a 19 years old, by the way, we went to a bar we liked. She fed him pasta with a spoon, and he ate it. I thought it was weird, so I asked him about it. He told me there was nothing between them, and that she was like a sister to him. Huh? That was the first sign I should have taken to leave. 
I was mad and hurt and texted him that he did something bad to me. Then I blocked him. After ranting for hours on end, I decided to write in my book about how I felt about what was going on, and then sent him the message. I blocked him again right away, so I don't have to wait to see what he says if he ever replies, which I don't think he will. Because of what he did that day, I don't think he will ever say sorry or apologize. It looked like he didn't care at all. When I tell him how I feel about him, whether it's good or bad, he never says anything back. It seemed like every time we talked about our relationship, the other person was either angry, rude, or only slightly sorry. It took a lot of thought and putting together a lot of puzzle pieces for me to figure out when and why this was happening. I'm still really hurt by it, and this is making it hard for me to deal with. Was I really that stupid to believe my boyfriend when he kept giving me signs that he didn't want me? This certainly got more attention than I thought it would. I am tired and busy right now. I will probably let you know by next weekend, but in case anyone is still interested I was able to call my older sister and tell her how I felt. She was great. She and her husband came from my town. They picked me up at the hotel and took me back to their house. We talked about it for most of the day, and they gave me some great ideas for what to do next. In the end I chose to spend this week with my sister. Plus, I quickly talked to Lara when I went home to pack a few things. But because my sister came with me, we didn't discuss the subject. While I'd like to find out what happened, I feel my friendship is already over, no matter the reason. Okay, I realize this sounds silly now that it's all written down. But I don't know what to do. I spent some time writing this, so I thought I'd post it and maybe get some helpful advice. Overall, I don't understand what's going on because my fiancé's friend is hitting on me and my fiancé doesn't seem to mind or even tell her to do it. Nothing happens in this story except for a strong feeling that something is wrong. First, I'm not in the US, so I don't need legal help, which probably doesn't apply to my country unless you're Brazilian. Hi, my name is Mark, M26, and I've been engaged with Lara, F29, for about three years. We've been together for almost 10 years and have been dating on and off since 2018. In a while, this will be useful. From the start, our relationship has been excellent in every way. Most people would call us a bland pair because we agree on almost everything. Our life goals, our careers, our bedrooms, our living standards, our work-life balance, you name it. One thing we always agreed on was that we would only be with one person at a time. I have strong feelings about open relationships that are only mine. Lara isn't powerful, but she agreed that we would only date each other as long as we were together. However, things became a little strange after she met this girl, let's call her Amanda. After the COVID limits were lifted, Lara met Amanda at work, or got back in touch with her. In just a few weeks, they became close friends. It got so bad that they texted or FaceTime each other often and had girl mites together. Going from I just met this person at work to she's my best friend is so out of character for my fiancé. She's usually very private and shy. So, I thought it was weird at first. I told her about it, not because I was jealous, but because it seemed strange coming from her. She told me that Amanda was a girl she knew from school and that they used to hang out a lot but lost touch but are now getting back in touch. Okay, this answer made sense to me, I stopped thinking about it. If not for what happened next, I wouldn't have thought about it. Amanda is flirting with me a lot, you see. She always talks to me, gives me lots of praise and makes sexual jokes and innuendos about me, even when my fiancé is around. That being said, I'm not used to being flirted with, but I can tell the difference between someone being friendly and someone hitting on me, I let it rest for a while because Amanda might be fine the way she is. But then, something strange happened in January. I won't go into details, but Amanda crossed some my lines, and I needed to talk to Lara about it. I was very serious when I told her what I thought Amanda was doing. I also asked Lara if she had ever noticed something, and if it worried her. Lara almost laughed at me and told me not to worry about it and to go with the flow. When she told me that, she even smiled at me. I stopped talking to Lara about it after that day, but I did notice that Amanda's flirting became more direct. While Lara was on a business trip, she even asked me to go on a date. I said no. I told her I loved Lara and that we were only dating, 
and she just shrugged it off. What keeps me up at night though, is something that happened yesterday. As you may already know, Rio Grande do Sul, the most southern state of my country, is having a terrible time right now because of appalling rains. It just so happened that I was there on business when the rains happened. I'm not going into too much detail, but I was supposed to be there for a week to attend some workshops and training events. I had to stay a few extra days because my flights were cancelled. I chose to pay for my bus fare to get back. The trip was tough, it took half a day to get to a state capital. The following bus to my town wouldn't come for another three hours, so I would have to wait about ten hours. I told Lara that she could go to state capital, pick me up at the bus stop, and book a hotel room for us to stay at night so I could rest. In the morning, we would go back to my town. I told her not to worry because she would get a room. She loved the idea. When she sent me the address, I checked it out and saw it was a love hotel. Also, it's a pretty one. I liked the idea, first because she was paying for it, laughs, and second because we hadn't been intimate in two weeks. I think she had more than one reason to catch up. But I'm getting off track. Okay, so I got to the bus stop last night and she told me to find where she's parked. I do and as I get closer to our car, the door opens almost quickly, and Amanda gets out. What the heck? Her hair and makeup were done, and I felt a little scared. Why was she there? What happened to Lara? She was also pleased and told me that nothing was wrong. Lara had asked her to get me to Love Hotel. She grabs my arm and tries to get me into the car but I stand there, shocked. As you may know, I tend to think quickly, especially when my gut tells me something. So I felt my pockets, pretended to be nervous, it wasn't hard, and I wasn't acting, I was very nervous, and told her I had left my phone on the bus, giving myself a reason to run back into the station. After that I immediately texted Lara, and she laughed at me. When I told her I wasn't going to spend the night with her friend at Love Hotel, she laughed and said it was okay but I was stupid and oblivious to miss that opportunity and that we would talk when I got home. Even though I was already tired from the trip, I called a taxi, asked the driver to take me to the closest hotel, and booked a room for the night. I couldn't sleep because I kept overthinking and was scared Amanda would find me somehow. This morning, I called Lara. We only talked for a short time. She told me Amanda was a little upset with me but not mad I didn't even ask, and she said I could take the bus back, but she wouldn't talk about it. She told me everything was okay after I told her I was confused because I didn't understand what was happening. It made me feel strange, so I told her I didn't think so. She told me again that she wanted to talk to me in person. What the heck is going on? I have a reservation for one more night, so I'm not going home today. But has anyone else here been through something like this? What did Amanda do to catfish me? And with Lara's help anyway? Either Lara wants to test me, or she is seeing someone else and wants me to receive her feelings. I can't think of any other option, and honestly, I don't know my fiancé anymore. Am I responding too much? How did I miss the red flags that my boyfriend has been cheating on me for three years? I, 35 years old, just broke up with my boyfriend, 36 years old, because I found out he was cheating on me for the past three years. I had no idea. My world has been completely flipped upside down. We had just agreed on terms for him to move into my house. I thought we were finally taking a step forward after eight years. What did I miss? For the background, I met him in 2015, and we dated until 2019. I broke up with him due to compatibility issues, I wanted marriage and kids, but he wasn't sure he wanted marriage and wanted to wait to be more financially stable, but when the lockdown started in 2020, we started hanging out again, and after a while, he promised me that I was the only one for him and that he would work on the things I needed from him. We officially got back together towards the end of 2021, and I thought everything was mostly great. I felt he was genuinely making an effort in the areas I asked for. He was kind and thoughtful, and we never fought or even raised our voices at each other. The only issue was his reluctance to marry me, which I could no longer compromise on. Fast forward to this past Saturday. I'm home alone, he said he was hanging with his boys, and I couldn't find this annoying notification in my Facebook Messenger app. I'm one of those who can't stand to see the red bubble. I finally found a message request from someone I didn't know asking if the guy in my profile pic was my boyfriend. 
if so, her friend, who wanted to remain anonymous, had been involved with him on and off since 2020, most recently in Jan, April 2024. It was so sketchy, and she gave me no proof. How could I believe a rando on the internet over this guy I've known for nine years, who I truly believed was a decent man? He walked in the door to me crying on the couch, and I asked him if he knew who she was and what she was talking about. He said he couldn't imagine who it could be. He would never cheat on me. With his entire tiny frame shaking, he took my hands, looked into my eyes, and said, Babe, I want to marry you. I've really been thinking seriously about it, and I'm going to buy you a ring. You deserve that. We kissed. I sat next to him while messaging this woman, trying to get details. Eventually I asked to speak directly to the girl my boyfriend had been involved with. She said she would inform her. I then started frantically calling my friends, asking why someone would make up such a story. We all believed my boyfriend, right? He's been so good to me, right? He would never cheat. He doesn't even like talking to people. I was literally talking on speakerphone in front of him, defending him. I cried until 4 a.m. He fell asleep at 1.30. I eventually went to the guest room because I didn't want to wake him with my racing thoughts. After a while, maybe 30 minutes, maybe an hour, he came to the guest room, wrapped me up in his arms, and promised this was all crazy plot to break us up, and that he was fully committed to me, I finally fell asleep. Sunday came and went with him, racking his brain, trying to figure out who it could be. I, having just watched Baby Reindeer, was slowly convincing myself this was a crazy stalker. I said, how do you even defend yourself in a situation like this? And he heartily agreed. Monday morning, I go to work. I'm on people's finder websites trying to figure out who this woman is. She lives in a different state? What's her connection to my area? Is it a cousin? A friend? Suddenly, I get a new Facebook message from her with just a phone number. I search for the phone number on a couple of scam number, look up sites and people finder sites, but it didn't come back to anything. Sure that she wouldn't have any evidence and my boyfriend would be exonerated, I texted the number. Soon, I get a message back. She seemed genuine. She provided screenshots of messages from January and March of this year and pictures he had sent her. I recognized his mom's house in one of them. She said they met on a dating app in 2020, but he was hot and cold with her. It seemed like she would press him to define their relationship, and he would just break it off. I still don't know if she was re-initiating things or if he was actively pursuing her. The evidence became overwhelming, she said he broke up with her on April 1, 2024, and she had finally had enough. However, during a moment of sadness, she scrolled through his page and came across my newly updated profile picture, updated around April 21, 2024, featuring him and me. Side note, I knew he had a Facebook, and we were friends on it, but it wasn't significant to either of us. I never tagged him in anything, and neither of us changed our relationship status. We both disliked taking pictures, so there wasn't much overlap, just a picture or two every other year since 2016. Enough that she knew that I was with him first. However, it is strange because we were broken up when he met her, so I somewhat feel like the other woman. I confronted him with the evidence and asked for my keys back and for him to leave. He said okay, and had all of his things in his car in less than ten minutes. Barely a word was spoken. I had to stop him and ask him to acknowledge that it was real for my sanity, and he said yes. We talked again a couple days later, and I asked him questions. After he had left on Monday, I checked my text with him, and I had an exact match, date, and time where he said that he would see her at 7.30 p.m. To me, at 7.20 p.m., he says, I got an after-hours call, I'll be home late, and then a text at 10 p.m., headed home. Undeniable proof. He said he realized who she was and clarified that he broke up with her on April 1, 2021, not 2024. He claimed she doctored the screenshots to make them appear current, but they were actually from the previous year. He argued that she couldn't have known I would have matching texts, insisting it was just a coincidence. My trust in everything is shattered. I just feel as though I'm spiraling. The last three years have been a total lie. What red flags did I miss? Was I just too easygoing? I thought we just got along really well.
I went a little crazy and called his job because, of course, it would have a record of the after-hours call if it was true. I left a message for the one guy I met one time, but he hasn't called me back. I start therapy next week.